Here I'm going to show the Betrayers of Kamigawa uh, deck uh, Spirit Craft. Uh, I'm going to go through the creatures and then the sorceries and the uh, instants and enchantments. This is how I usually do my uh, deck videos. Uh, so here we have two of Lantern Kami. It's a one drop spirit, one, one, one with flying, uh, otherwise, a vanilla creature. Pretty nice. Uh, Trap Root Kami, one of them. It's a one drop. Uh, very interesting. It's a defender and it's got a star. Um, so, Trapdoor Kami's toughness is equal to the number of forests in play. Uh, and it may block as though it have flying. Uh, of course, if you play it for one mana green, there would have to be at least one forest in play. So, it'll be zero one. But it can be a pretty good wall if you had, like, say, six forests. That's a very interesting car. Then uh, two of Loam Dweller and uh, two of uh, Petal Main Baku. So Petal Main Baku is a two drop, um, one, two. Uh, whenever you play a spirit or arcane spell, you may put a Kai counter on this card or key. Uh, play, uh, put in one mana, and if you do, um, re every time you remove X key counters from this card, add X mana of any one color, any one color to your mana pool. That's pretty good. Uh, then we have Loam Dweller. It's a 2 2 2. That's pretty clean. Whenever you play a spirit or arcing spell, you may put a land card from your hand into play tapped. Wow, that's very nice. That would be a really nice mana boost. Then two of Faithful Squire um, and one of uh, Budoka Pupil. Uh, and both become legendary creature creatures when they flip. That's very nice. Uh, well, it depends. I mean, it's nice because you're going to get some kind of boost. It's not nice because if the legendary uh, uh, rule applies, you can't have more than one on the board. Uh, so Budoka Pupil is a two. It's a three drop, uh, two two. Whenever you play a spirit or arcing spell, you may put a key counter on Budoka Pupil at the end of turn. And the, if there are two or more key key counters, uh, you may flip it. Okay, so let's flip it and see what happens. Uh, it becomes Ichiga who topples oaks. You got to be strong to topple oaks uh, for sure. And then uh, it's got trample. It's a 4 3. So you remember you played a 3. So it's a 3 4 3 now. Uh, remove a key counter from Ichiga who topples oaks. Target creature gets plus 2 plus 2 uh, until end of turn. Uh, then in the case of Faithful Squire, um, Whenever you play a spirit or arcing spell, it's the same thing. It's the same thing as in Budoka Pupil. And again, it's a 3 2 2. So let's see what happens when you flip it. When you flip it, it's a little different because in the case of Ichiga, it's a 4 3. In the case of Kaiso, it's a 3 4. Otherwise, uh, yeah, the counters are a little different. Not really. No, they're actually the same. Ichiga has trample. Kaiso has flying. Uh, so they're very similar creatures, each fitting their specific color. Then we have two of Wax Main Baku and three of Kami of the Hunt. Uh, Kami of the Hunt is a 3 2 2. Uh, whenever you play a Spirit or Arcing spell, this card gets plus one plus one until end of turn. That's all right if you play it later in the game. If you play it early, in a, say like turn three, where you're only going to have three mana, um, it, it could be a little limiting because it, it'll be a three for two two. Uh, but you can boost it with plus one plus one. That's pretty good. Uh, Wax main Baku is a three two two. Uh, so really the same thing, but it's got these key counters. Uh, and then when you play one, you remove X key counters, and you can tap X target creatures. That could be useful. Then Kami of the Tattered uh, Shoji, two of them, and two Horizon Seed. Uh, so in the case of Kami, it's a 5-2-5. Five, five. 
uh, whenever you play a spirit or arcing spell, uh, this uh, creature gains flying until end of turn. Uh, and then in the case of Horizon Seed, same value. It's a 5, but it now a 2-1. It's a little more aggro, although a very weak creature. Uh, but whenever you play a, a spirit or arcing spell, uh, you can regenerate a target creature. So if somebody doesn't decide to kill this card, you can use it to regenerate something every turn. Um, then you've got Kodama of the Center Tree, a 5 drop, and Upweaver Kumo, a 6 drop. We're getting really heavy now. Uh, in the case of Kodama of the Center Tree, legendary creature, rare, star and star of P and T. Let's find out. So the P and the T, power and toughness, are each equal to the number of spirits you control. If you don't control any spirits but this one, it's just a 1-1. One, one. Um, <clears throat> and then Kodama of the Center Tree has Soul Shift X, where X is the number of spirits you control. That could be pretty good, because then you can use this to fish out a, uh, a, uh, another, another spirit from your graveyard that would be of the same CMC or less. Convert a mana cost. Orb Weaver Kumo uh, may block as though it had flying. That means reach. It's a 6-3-4. And it also gains forest work until end of turn whenever you play a spirit or arcing spell. Looks a little heavy to me. Two of Scaled Hulk and one of a gigantic 7-drop. Another legendary creature is what I love about this set. So many legendary creatures you can build a fun commander decks with. Scaled Hulk is a 6-drop, 4-4. Four, four. Whenever you play an, a Spirit or Arcing spell, it gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. That could be useful because then you'd have a 6-6-6. Six, six, six. Uh, Oyobi, who, spirit, who split the heavens, is a 7-drop, 3-6 with flying. And it's got the same deal, but whenever you play a Spirit or Arcing spell, you put a 3-3 three, three white spirit creature token with flying into play. If played well, that could be really well done. Bless Breath, two of them. Kodama's Might, two of them. Uh, Bless Breath is a one-drop arcane. Target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn, and you can splice onto arcane this card with playing an additional white mana, which means as you play an arcane spell, you may reveal this card from your hand and pay its splice cost. If you do, add this card's effects to that spell, but again, you don't get to play it, which is great, because you can play it again. You can, you can splice multiple times. Likewise, Kodama's Might also has splice. Um, same uh, cost. And then, but in, the, in this case, even though it's, it, it's also a one-drop, and target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. That's very nice. I think both cards are very nice. Uh, one of other worldly journey, two of uh, Tarashi's verdict. Uh, other worldly journey, another arcing. Both are arcings. Both are two drops. Uh, journey has remove target creature from the game. At end of turn, return that creature to play under its owner's control with a plus one plus one counter on it. That's pretty nice. And th and in the case of verdict destroy target attacking creature with power three or less that could be useful i think a lot of these cards look really useful uh two of vital search one of wear away vital search is a two drop you gain three life that's not so bad it's got spline up to arcane for an additional two uh, which means that you show it and you don't need to actually play it you can just splice onto some other arcane um so yeah yeah, so it would be as you play an arcane spell, so some other spell. And then in the case of wear away, it's like naturalized, but with two green, destroy target artifact or enchantment. That's pretty good. Then two of unchecked growth and one roar of Dukai. Unchecked growth is a three drop arcane instant. Target creature gets plus four, plus four on their end of turn. If it's a spirit, it gains trample until end of turn. That that is very nice to me. Uh, Roar of Jukai. It's another arcane, also the same uh, CMC three. If you control a forest, each blocked creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn. 
Yeah, that's both are nice.